Alright, uh, w- welcome back, folks, to another episode of 42 Strains. Uh, uh, sorry if you can't hear me right now. We're uh, doing a special Dabby McDabbyson episode where we're dabbing the entire episode. Um, where is so, everybody? Uh, yeah, uh, you may recognize the other voices in the room, as in there's only two of us. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Sir for Dan, as usual. And to my right is the one only Chuck D. Chuck Dante. Well, hello, hello, hello. But everyone else is fucking missing. Uh, I'm not sure. I have an excuse. I'm old. I may have written it down on my calendar as the wrong day. Chuck D., what's your excuse? I missed one episode since I've been here. Oh, you were here? You were just asleep. And everyone left me. I I, I guess it's just the two of us, so I guess... You uh, and I. I guess spam... You're you're in for a bumpy ride, cause it's just Sir for Dan and Chuck D, uh, dabbing out. Yeah, it was uh, dab time. I got wedding cake shatter today. Oh, I love wedding cake. I've only had wedding cake as wax, as wax or shatter, wax or shatter or uh, crumble. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to have never tried had it as treat. Been lucky enough to have tried wedding cake as a treat. It looks a lot like birthday cake, only a bit more frosty. I believe they call it fondant. I believe that's what they put on wedding cake. You son of a bitch. A bit more fondant in the idea. Thank you. Uh, the song you heard was the theme song to Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Chip, Chip and Dale. Rescue, Rescue Rangers. Rangers. Yeah. So, uh, like everybody and their mother, Chucky e. D and I, uh, uh, and I bet the rest of the gang in 42 Strains, we will just speak for them because they're not here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we got Disney+. Plus. Yeah, we uh, did. So, uh, yeah, you've been enjoying some of the Plus and Thrust? Oh, I've been definitely doing the Plus and Thrust. Yeah. I'm over Netflix and chill, and it's on to the Disney Plus. I'm, I'm over it until the next season of Strange Effects drops, so that I'll be right back into it again, for 100%. Oh, well, there's also the DC streaming service. Gotta show them love, too. Oh, Doom yeah. Patrol. Doom, Doom Patrol. Patrol. Doom Patrol. Amazing. But, I mean, there's so much good to watch, especially while Stone, because, I mean, I just finished The Boys, finally. Way behind time on that. That's fine. The Boys but is fantastic, and I think Amazon anybody, anybody should check out The Boys. Um, another nice little hidden gem out there is Raising Dion. Oh, yeah. I'm going to start uh, that. Yeah, Single, I've heard, sing, single Black That's female. on Netflix. Yeah, it's a Netflix one. Um, single Black Mom Raising Her Three-Year-Old, who instantly... Powers. Uh, can you? Uh, I'll I'll recommend one to you that maybe you, isn't on your radar. Fleabag. Fleabag. Fleabag is an Emmy Award winning show that started off as a solo performance show that was touring international fringe festivals all over the place. Uh-huh. She got a, her own series on Amazon Prime, and I believe uh, it, the first two seasons are on there. Emmy Awards for both seasons. It's all a young woman's journey through. Uh, tumultuous uh, late 20s, early 30s, and trying to be an adult, yet not an adult, and trying to be <coughs> free, and yet not free, and yeah, it's, it's a, I like it, I, I think it's a good show. Uh, 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 so, uh, things I mean, are going to have to run a little different on this episode. We, we don't really have a review. We, we don't really, we don't, I mean, there's, we could, we could have tried, but the... I mean, would it be a consensus? Talk, would, like, I mean, would we be able to give it a fair score with just two of us? We well, we could talk about the dabs, but how have we, we have we ever? I don't know if Forty Two Strains has ever had just two people. Has never had two people, to my knowledge. Oh wait, dab time! Oh, dab o'clock, dab o'clock. Go ahead, uh, Chucky D. You you dab, uh, and um, I don't I don't really know what we're supposed to do here. That's it's always. Double A or somebody, I mean... I have an idea. What? Wacky news. Wacky news! I guess. I think. Let's see. So, wacky news. In New York State, a deer was rescued from a plastic Halloween bucket. Yeah. Yeah, November 22nd, <laughs> a deer in New York State was rescued from... A, why would you repeat it? If your headline is that, why would you say and, it again? And in the, the first, first goddamn line, because they've got nothing. Uh, they, this is their edition of 42 Strains. It was uh, being spotted wandering around for about four days with the container stuck on its head over its snout. 
which meant for four days it didn't get water, it could, yeah. couldn't breathe very well, and didn't get food. So I, this deer was probably in a lot of trouble in Putnam Val- Valley, uh, New York State. All right, so I was just really hoping that this was just going to be the deer happened to get it on just so perfect that it was just wearing the bucket on its no, head. No, it's it the strap shut, is on the back of the head. the strap head. is on it and its head is in there. So it, it was getting the there. Snickers. It was getting yeah. 100 grand. It, it found and, something that it wanted and, and it, uh, unfortunately stayed. It would have just loved to see a deer walking around with a jack-o'-lantern just perfectly perched on the That would have been cool. Have you seen those ones where people take a Halloween mask and turn them into like squirrel feeders? So that way the squirrels get up in there, but their body's hanging down <laughs> with a giant creepy mask. But then the body of a squirrel underneath. Huh. Look that up later. It's fun. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Ooh, yeah. this wedding cake. Hits. November 22nd. So this is a long time after Halloween that this plastic bucket was out there somewhere on somebody's porch. And for four days, neighbors in Putnam Valley, uh, New York State, saw this uh, deer. After Putnam Valley Animal Control, uh, salute to Putnam Valley Animal Control. We'll roll a joint for you guys later. Uh, uh, after they rescued him, neighbors uh, continued to see the deer spotted in the area, and they've named it Lil Pumpkin. That's fucking cute. I'm about Lil that. Pumpkin. Have you, um, Sir Dan? Yes. Have you yourself ever encountered an animal like in, in in danger like that, like entangled in something where you've had to come to make a decision for oh, yeah. to help out? Yeah, no, I've I've given CPR to a bobcat before. Are you surprised? This, no, Are not, not hundred percent. I was actually just thinking. I was like, "Is this when you were working at a certain theme park?" No, 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 no. Not not a theme park. This was. Uh, I used to go camping all the time solo, where I just disappear for like five days I've away from these, everybody. I've heard these stories. So this is also how he aged so fast. Very quickly, yeah. Uh, when you're just out in the woods on your own for a while. So I there was at one point in time that uh, I heard something rustle around by my campfire. I put the fire out, so it was just smoke and smoldering. But I was in bed, kind of dozing off in my in my tent, in my sleeping bag. You know that that you've been camping. You know that nice, warm, snuggly. You just got undressed, just got into the sleeping bag. So that cold air just got trapped in there, but it's starting to warm up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that you're gonna drift off, and then I hear something rummaging around. I'm like, oh shit, maybe it's a bear or something. I unzip and it's a bobcat. And I had tied up my garbage in a tree because when you camp off of campsites like I do, uh, you you tie your garbage up, you haul it up a tree. So that way if a bear comes along, he'll go up the tree, not into your campsite. So you, you walk it down a little bit. And that's what I did. Well, this bobcat was sniffing around, then he climbed up a tree and he got into the bag and it ripped open. He came down and started going through my garbage. I guess... He was a little excited or a little hungry, and he got a tin can stuck in his mouth. A complete from my chili beans for that night. A tin can stuck in his mouth. Yeah, that's not fun. So he's gagging and gagging, trying to get it out. I guess every time he gags, the back of the can is hitting the back of his teeth, so it's not coming out. And so I get over there, and I see it's in trouble, and it's backing against a tree because it's freaking out that I came at it. And I, I got nothing else to do, so I just jump on the fucking thing. And it's trying to fight me claws-wise, but I'm a pretty big boy. So I'm laying on top of this fucking thing, and I'm just with one hand pulling the under jaw, and the other hand reaching my fucking hand into this bobcat's mouth. Well, in this, all this struggle and everything, the fucking tin can went down a little bit further, and he gagged to the point where he wasn't breathing anymore. Stop fighting me. He rolled over, and he's just laying there. Oh, so I, shit. I reach in, pop that tin can out, and I got I got that moment to decide, do I want to try and give CPR to this wild fucking cat, knowing when it wakes up, it's going to want to kill me? Or B, do I let a, this wild animal die? And I didn't know what to do, and all I could do is, all right, I just started doing, so I pushed down on the chest a little bit. Which you do animal CPR quite a bit like you do pay baby CPR. So it's, it's you're just pressing down slightly. I put my hand over its mouth. I close its mouth and put my hand over its nose and slowly start breathing in. I see its chest expand. And as soon as I let go, I see the chest deflate. And then it expands again on its own. I let go of that fucking mouth. And I ran back towards my tent and held up my hatchet. Waiting for this fucking thing to work. Do I have to kill this thing I just saved? 
and it looked at me and just ran off into the woods. So yeah, I've, uh, I've, had, to, I've had to rescue uh, animal at least once before. Um, see, so when you have Surfer Dan and Chuck Dante sitting side by side, a couple of conversations might happen. Yeah, yeah, a few, <laughs> a few story time. Yeah. Sometimes they uh, they or, love time travel. What is what is Bert <laughs> Bert Cringe? Secret time. Secret, secret time. time. Secret time. We're just telling secrets. Secret time. Oh man, that's uh, awesome. Um, yeah, no. So so that's yeah. I've 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 had to rescue an animal. So mine's the there. complete opposite. I hit a squirrel once with my you, car. You hit a squirrel with your car. Yeah, yeah, it was a total accident. But you actually got it after hitting a squirrel. Most people are like the squirrel. It's a furry rodent. We're we're just gonna drive on. But you, you hit the squirrel and you got out to help. No, no, that's what I was saying. It was the complete opposite. I just hit a squirrel once. Oh, and then you just drove off? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I walked right into it. I walked right, right into it. It was the exact complete opposite. You're like, oh, fuck that squirrel. Oh, man. That's crazy. Yeah, buddy. Oh, Here's man. where I know we we normally like talk about the taste. I mean... So wedding cake, I've had it as wax before. Oh, and you're about to right now because it is still dab time, but a different way. So the first one, you the first hits we took was the air uh, and the on air. That was, w- was the, the first ones we did in the pre bowl uh, where was on my peak. Your peak, yeah. That peak you've been a, photographed on your Instagram, absolutely. As as uh, what, what's your Instagram? Oh, Chuck underscore Dante Chuck underscore Dante, yeah. yeah. Because I know the other one. So this is an old school. This is an actual mini rig. This is a mini rig. This is by MJ Arsenal. I have to, I, for lack of a better term, I have to suck really hard on this again. I would. If I remember correctly. I okay. would. Okay. The mini rig uh, that I have here by MJ Arsenal is called the Ursa. And I've paired it with a uh, couple of custom dab pieces that I've gotten from uh, G West. You can find him on Instagram as well. He sells some amazing quality bangers, uh, opaque bottom, full opaque inserts for your puff coves. Uh, he's got carb caps for days, all for, um, I want to say, like a quarter of the price of anyone else you'll see on Instagram. Hey, we don't ever do any of the work to post this shit. So let's just say Double A will go ahead and post a link or something. Make yeah, him do Double A will probably yeah, post yeah, a link to, it. to yeah, it'll be fine. on there. <laughs> <laughs> just make work for him. He didn't show up. He didn't show up here for whatever reason. And 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 Rue's apparently going to do the art for one of these things that we have going on. Yeah. We'll what? Have no, I'm just trying to get her baited. Into okay. Yeah. She's make her do some too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you totally had me fool. I was like, I'm really? on a roll today, Super What's Dan. Going on? I'm on a roll. Hey, to be fair, I'm super fucking baited. <laughs> Man, so, so this is wedding cake now out of a different dab rig. Yep, out of an MJ Arsenal Ursa dab rig with a G West custom banger and a uh, Ruby Pearls by the Ruby Pearl Company. Ruby Pearls. Yes. Now, now explain to uh, Spam. Yeah. Because uh, they might not know what Ruby Pearls spam, are. Spam, spam, spam. So Ruby Pearl Company uh, produces turp pearls for your bangers. And when you put those into a banger and heat it up and apply a carb cap on top, you can move these pearls around that have heated evenly with the banger. Um, it gets more surface area of your dab, whether you do wax, shatter, <coughs> crumble. It will spin and collect on those, and it also helps it from running up the walls of your banger, yeah, leading to some some leakage and some uh, lost lost dab. And it gets you high as fuck. And let's it gets not you let's not forget super that. high as fuck. <coughs> you if you like smoking weed, you should love dabbing. And if you don't, hey, it's not for everyone. But it's not. But don't don't hate it till you try it. Have you? You've you've been in. I, I would care to say a, a fair amount of relationships in your life. A lot less than people my age typically, but... No, but for you, what you would feel is, this is... I, it's not like I've been with one person. Yeah, okay. I've, I've, and I've been with a healthy amount enough that I don't feel like I'm a whore. Let like I am. This way. I'm a whore. I'm, I'm the biggest slut in the world. I just don't get no play. Wow. Yeah. Do, do you need a handy during this episode? Mm-hmm. Don't, I mean, don't, don't test me right now. Sir. I'm just saying we can plus them for us. Don't test me right I'm now. I'm just saying. We have uh, Disney plus this dick. <laughs> I liked uh, drop it on Disney's. I'm but, it. Uh, it, it, it loses me in the fact that you get Netflix and chill. Um, I know it rolls. Amazon it rolls. Prime and Dine. 
Is yeah. it? Oh. I never heard that oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah. When you're smooching up with a girl and you man, it looks like you're you're in a comfy house because who the fuck got Amazon Prime unless you're at least living. That's true. You know, so or if so you're doing Amazon like we are and all borrowing people's you, passwords. You know, well, yeah. So you're just buying. You know, you, you're putting together a nice dinner for your woman. You prime and dine. I like that. I like yeah. that. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna use that the next time when I watch Good Omens because that's the next. <laughs> one uh, uh, so the the taste so, of this. Uh, you're saying I, wait wait you yeah sorry was in a relationship. Why yes, are we bringing this up? That's why we're bringing this up. Why are we sorry, bringing this up? Why? So because uh, we, we were we were talking about uh, have you ever in your time in relationships have you ever run into that the the I mean we all joke about Netflix and chill but. In, back in my day, because I'm old, we you'd pick up your girl, you'd go out, grab something to eat, you'd swing by Blockbuster or Hollywood, and then you guys would pick out something to watch together, right. and go back to the place and end up fucking on the couch. All right. So this is nothing new. No. We had Blockbuster Move for a long time. It was Blockbuster Move. But I'm just saying, um, did, did you ever have, have you ever run into the situation where somebody invites you over and you're thinking, you're full on going, oh, it's Netflix and chill time, and you get over there and it's actually just Netflix and chill time? Yes. Now, are you disappointed or are you fine with it when that happens? It depends on if I wondered if it was going to happen, whether or not Netflix came into play or not. Ah, you know, okay. if, it, if it, that's very situational, like it doesn't, you know, if, if it's a girl that I was wondering if it was going to happen with, regardless, anything, yeah, and I'm just like, oh, any night could be the night, yeah, and then it's like, oh, this is actually just Netflix and chill. I mean, if I was hoping I would get some any other night, of course I'm going to be a little bummed that night if that's not yeah. the night when you felt like it was the setup. But on an average. No, nah, there's a lot of good shit on Netflix. Sometimes I want to watch my show. I, I've been, I've been, reading, <laughs> I've been reading on the social medias all over the place uh, uh, where, like, people are like full on pissed when it ends up happening. Like they're they're like, no, 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 you invited me over for Netflix and chill. I just thought that was. I'm like, like why? Wait, wait, why they're like mad. So wait, they're like mad that they're not getting the that fuck they on? ain't getting fucked. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying that they were getting mad that they weren't like, hey, wait, no, we're here to watch a show, young lady. Like <laughs> they were offended that they weren't. They like they brought them over that to would Netflix be a funny and chill. Other way. No, because I've honestly I heard Bitch, that. stop sucking. Ducktales is on. Exactly. Yeah. No, exactly, I got gotcha, you. Exactly. I got gotcha. you. And so I've actually heard that before myself, and I honestly thought that it was just like an urban legend that no. they, because I'm like no there's no guy out there that's just going to be like hey calm down I want to watch my show but I'm like yes there is but I've been hearing people saying like yeah. oh you know there's like there's this whole thing going on where there's these guys that are actually getting offended that girls are inviting them over to only to like say they want to watch Netflix but instead they actually want to fuck and I'm like I think there are some guys out there that are getting offended by that. Really? But I don't think there's a lot of them. I, I would hope there's uh, a lot of them. Uh, because I'd like to believe that in this day and age with people that are walking and chewing bubblegum and texting while driving. Yeah. That they can fucking watch Netflix if it's a good enough show. Yeah. That's what Doggy would, Style was made for. That's exactly right. I mean, uh, we'll do a Doggy Style so we can both watch X-Files. Uh... You mammals, me, baby. Yeah, I mean, we ain't no, nothing but mammals. I'd love to ask a woman's opinion on this to find out, like, if they, uh, if they want to, like, if, if what's in their mindset when they invite over for Netflix and chill time. Are they definitely wanting Netflix and chill, or are they wanting Netflix and chill to maybe move into Netflix and chill, or not? But uh, unfortunately, none of the ladies showed up either. It's just. So fucking weird. It they, was. We turned on the lights in the studio and nobody was here. I really think we came on the wrong day. We might have, but you know what's going to happen? They're going to do an episode without us because they're going to show up on the right day and go, where the fuck are all those guys? I didn't show up for one episode. It's and okay. everything's thrown off. It's okay. I've missed a couple and they just keep leaving me alone. Yeah, but you're uh, old. I am old. We assume right. every time you're not here, it's because you've died. Because I died. I usually have. I just keep coming back, uh, much like Keith Richards. Um, so, uh, taste of, of wedding cake. I, I, I've i always thought it had a, a good name because it has that sweet creaminess on the tongue, in my opinion, that a good quality cake would have. What do you think? I think I just really like how smooth it's always come across, so I think that would really uh, go along with somebody describing something like wedding cake, which is 
He usually very soft. Yeah. Tanked, very like soft. your tank is something pleasant. So it's very smooth and its taste is just um I mean, it's so concentrated on all the flavors. Like that's why I've always thought it would be hard for us to do a dab episode. Yeah. Is because yeah. we're we're our palates it's super are trained, concentrated, yeah. Our palates are trained to the marijuana ganja. Yeah. And, and we're very much tree down. smokers, you and I. Yeah. And uh no, let's just go right into it on the puff co again real quick. Now are let's we going go I, are we doing the puff I thought you had one other piece that we were gonna do. But I wanted to bring this into play now Back we're again? actually discussing the Great. taste. Because this was done as a pre bowl. We did not do this one on the air. No, we haven't. No, You're right. We, the, did not. we we we've dabbed dabbed out of the mini rig on the air. Yeah. Uh well while you're dabbing, um I'm I'm gonna go ahead and uh and put on the next uh, w- 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 wacky news. What? But uh, but 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 uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but 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 it's so much easier to do when somebody else is doing wacky news. I don't I don't know how the beat goes now. I'm just do you. I, I mean, honestly, I can do it. It just doesn't feel it right. Feels weird. Yeah. Uh, a large python, and I'm not talking about Hulk Hogan's right arm. Oh. Uh, no, a large python crashes through a spa ceiling in China. I'm a snake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a slither and slither and Hey, snake. I heard you do nails in here. Is this a spa? I want to be a smoothing, soothing snake. Yeah. Yeah. Workers at a spa in China were shocked. Shocked, I say. When a ten foot python <laughs> fell through the ceiling. Experts say that it may have been living up there for up to 10 years. Nope. Nope. Uh, yeah. Nope. Yeah, 10 nope. foot. Nope. Spam, I am over 6 foot. That's 4 feet on me. Nope. Yeah, nope. An employee at the spa in nope. Foshan, uh, Guangdong? Nope. Guangdong province. Nope. I am... Nope. I am sorry, spam. Anybody who is from China nope. or is Chinese or knows anybody Let who is Chinese this without racist, or enjoys uh, Chinese food, uh, Guangdong province. It looks like Guangdong. I think it's Guang. Guangdong. Guangdong. Okay, because the U A I didn't know made an ang sound. I thought it was without the U makes an ang sound on theirs. It's Guang. Gwang? Okay, Gwang. Make oh, go, go, go. I, I, hear, I hear it in the back of the throat. Yeah. Gu- Guangdong? Yep. Guangdong province. Uh, I'm trying very hard. I am I know that it sounds like I'm being racist. I'm really trying to be sensitive, honestly, and that's where it's coming across. Racist. Uh, I know. Reported hearing a loud noise November 12th and investigated to discover a large python had crashed into the business through the ceiling. Police and a reptile hangler, uh, handler were summoned to the scene to capture the python, which it was then measured to be about 10 feet. Nope. The snake handler said it appeared that the python had been living in the ceiling for some time. The experts said that there are many restaurants in the area which attracted rats for the python to eat. Yeah! So, in, in, in your lifetime, career jobs that you've ever been at what's the strangest animal you've ever had randomly enter your employment because i know it's not a 10 foot fucking python through the ceiling no so what what's the strangest one you've ever had happen a great dane a great dane yep that's not a small dog no ha- tell do tell we had front door open at our restaurant on Pinole valley road uh, and i was working on the deep fryer and uh before I knew it, Scooby Doo was ordering at the cash register. <laughs> oh! Like, <laughs> paws up on register looking like, what you doing, boy? Yeah, I really thought the next move was up and over the counter. Huh! <laughs> what did it do instead? Stared at me. Just stared? Waiting for. Did, did uh-huh. you get some food? No. No? I, I stared at it for probably a good about 10 seconds, and then its owner, who was walking by, was just was like, hey! And it went rocking out the parallel door we had directly adjacent, wow. and it just was there, popped up. Chilled at me for about 10 seconds and then just scooted on out like it was nothing. Wow. Yeah. Hey, uh, what's the special today? It was like <laughs> it was like 9 a.m. Wow. There's nobody else in the restaurant at that moment. The other the other chef was in the bathroom. Yeah. Nobody believed me. 
Wow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's probably the strangest. I've seen everything from birds flying in to uh, an um, awkward amount of random insects that aren't the type you'd think. Yeah. Would show up in a restaurant, like, um, like looking under a, a cupboard and seeing a praying mantis yeah. just there. And you're like, you don't belong here. And there's no reason yeah. why a praying mantis is just like, why I want you your here? bacon. Like, yeah. you know, it's, why are you here? Uh, things like that. I've shared that I've been a rock and roll roadie before. Yeah. And uh, I was working uh, lights on a on a gig. Uh, I can't remember. I, I want to say Moody Blues. It might have been uh, it might have been somebody else, but I want to say Moody Blues or Kansas. One of the two. Moody Blues or Kansas. All right, spam. So it was Moody Blues or Kansas. Our so anyway, spam. Uh, uh, so the lights uh, in one section. Uh, the, it looks like they're they're shaking a little, and so my boss tells me to check it out. And so I look, and there's a a huge fucking moth, <laughs> like the biggest one I'd seen had landed on this light, and had been casting a shadow on stage in the shape of a fucking moth. Mm-hmm. And this moth was jumping from light to light. So as the band's playing, we're just seeing this moth shape, like the moth symbol. Like Mothman was gonna be called, <laughs> so it's batting <laughs> around, batting around, and I'm, my boss is yelling at me on my headset, and I'm like, "What the fuck am I supposed to do about this? I'm supposed to get out there and kill the fucking moth?" And at that moment, I look up, and a bat swoops in, catches the moth midair, and swoops right the fuck out. I'm not the only one who saw this because a few people that were in the audience were looking up and just started clapping. And the band's like, yeah, all right. They were changing. They were like changing in the set. There was no reason to clap at that point. But these couple of people are clapping because they looked up and that bat swooped in. Full on National Geographic shit. <laughs> right in the middle of the show. <laughs> it was great. That's fantastic. Um, one, one thing I wanted to bring up about this when I was taking my... Um, yeah, the taste. Dinner, while you were getting um, your new super taste. Super fruity, actually. Really? Yeah, off that bit. And it's more of like all along the citrus lines that you'd get. But this one, as opposed to being more of like, you know, an orange type of citrus or a lemon, I want to say this one more leans on the lime side of things. Really? Uh, lime citrus is what I'm feeling from it. Huh. I, I did not get that. I do get a little bit of fruitiness undertone, but I was getting more of like, a, it, maybe that's where you and I are going on the same thing because you said lime. I'm getting like a light tartness, just a little bit of tartness. I was equating it to like raspberry. Okay. So imagine a nice creamy cake with a raspberry filling. Okay. That little bit of tartness. Mm. That's what I'm seeing, but it's it's still it's it's one of my favorite tasting well, waxes I've ever had. Guess we're just different snakes with different rings and stripes. I guess so. <laughs> as long as we don't fall through the ceiling. Oh my god! Of a no. Spa. no. Gosh, man, that's really crazy though. Bat, the bat story. I like that a lot. I could definitely see me being one of those dumbasses in the crowd looking yeah, up go, at just the right, woo, to just looking up at the right moment. Yeah, it happened to see the woo hoo. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, so effect. What do you think about effect on this bad boy? <laughs> We're not even doing like official scale. No, we're not doing scales. scores because there's no reason to do a score like, because it's, it's just me and you. If so we it's tie, like effect. but here's the thing: there's yeah. two of us. If you say three and I say two, yeah, what, what's the, <laughs> we can't do a half. That's what I'm like. So how are we even talking? Just talking about what the effect is as opposed to our rating scale. Yeah, what do you feel I the effect an, is I like? I get an amazing, amazing giggly body high off this stuff. I feel my body wanting to move around. Almost as if I was on another type of, uh, like, a psychedelic a- aspect. I like the move game. Yeah, I I, I, I definitely want this strain at, like, an outdoor concert. Yeah. I, I want to go, I want to get up and dance to this shit. Yeah. I, I, I want, I want to move. Good, yeah. Uh-huh. For sure that. Man. As you yawn. <coughs> <laughs> I want to move. Different. That yeah. just, that just made me feel good. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely how I'm feeling. I'm feeling that giggly, but the body feels loose. That's what makes me want to dance. Uh, it just I, I feel I feel comfy. Yeah, this is nice. that's where that yard comes from. And then you point it out; it's coming again. Oh, I know it's gonna oh. be. Uh, 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 so uh, how you, did you guys get? Uh, did Stonerway 
get Disney Plus the day that it dropped? Yeah. Yeah, we did. We lucked out. If not the day of, it was the day after. What was the first thing that you watched? The first thing that we watched? Uh, as a group, Stoner Way watched... You! Oh, the me? group's not here. Fuck them. They, they don't get to answer the question. Oh. What was the first thing that you watched? Episode Disney. one of Chippendales. <laughs> Episode one of Chippendales. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not a bad way to start. To on, just because it was there and I was like, holy shit. Yeah. I haven't had this at like at my, my disposal and since I just randomly typed it in on YouTube a while back and yeah. Just, you know, yeah. Felt it uh, like going through it still like since I've watched Goofy Movie, Toy Story. Well, I know um, your love of the Goofy movie too. I love the Goofy movie. Yeah, so much. it's Powerline. Powerline is Come on, one of the favorite. greatest rappers of the nineties. If I could easily go back in time and see Powerline in concert, oh, I would. I move over because I'd want to see MC Scat Cat. If we're talking about animated rappers, <laughs> um, uh, first thing I watched. Could yeah. you could you guess what the first thing I watched? Everything. At your disposal. I'll narrow it down. Oh, I know you Not watched, movie. No, you watch the Muppets show. No. Oh, really? They don't have the Muppet show I on Disney Plus. they had Plus. the Muppet nope. show on there. They have some Muppet movies, but not the Muppet show. There is something on there called the Muppets, and it's like but the it Muppets. They is a uh, they there's a Muppet TV show that's on there. Oh. That was the one that was the late night talk show that Miss Piggy was in. Yeah. Uh, there's the Muppets, as in the newer movie with Jason Siegel. Oh, that was and, one of the uh, series. No, the, oh, the okay. series is the one from the late night oh, talk okay. show. Yeah, they don't have the Muppet show. Bummer. Uh, yeah, it's it sucks uh, as a Muppet fan. No, the first thing I watched, I binged watch straight through the first four episodes of Gargoyles. That makes sense. Because it's been a long time. You are one. You wanted to see your brethren. Exactly. Exactly. I just I just sense. stayed not stoned during the night. To, or it's weird. Man, well, uh, we, and then I then I went on and started watching a few episodes here and there of Darkwing Duck. Because yeah, I, I, I knew that one was coming. I own the first um, two seasons of Darkwing Duck on on DVD, but. Uh, this one I could watch some later. I'm about stuff. to destroy the old Spider-Man the old X-Men show. You mean the '90s X-Men? Yeah. You mean the na 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 one of the no no that's the computer no, generated one. Say, I'm not sure Never if it mind. was because no. that might be Ultimate Spider. Yeah, that's Spider Ultimate. Man. I believe that's Ultimate. Yeah, because this one is also the one that had teamed up with X Men. Yes. Multiple times. Yeah. No. This is and they that's have, a different I think one. it's a couple of the same animators. If yeah, not the it was. Same animators yep. were on that. And then there was a couple of episodes oh. that got like the Fantastic Four and some. Yeah, Avengers which I that. also yeah. really loved that solo show. And yeah, it is on there as well. Yep, I'm so it's it's all on I'm, there. I'm gonna redo the X Men. I'm gonna cry. Series. Oh that yeah, Genosha storyline is heartbreaking. Oh, the the, the there's several <laughs> episodes of that. Talk about redoing a comic book in such a brilliant way. Now, what I want to know if they have on, which I haven't deep dived to check, is there was a kid show, and I'm what by kid show I mean this was for little kids uh, that I thoroughly enjoyed. If you never saw it, especially well, Stone. Spam, this is a Surfer Dan recommendation. If you can find the the Superhero Squad. I didn't see it on there. Uh, it's kid, almost kid versions or Chibli-style versions <laughs> of, of your favorite uh, Avengers characters. And it's, it's dumbed down to be kids, but they still do full story arcs. That's and they, awesome. And they touch on every... They, they don't shy away from characters. Punisher shows up in one episode. And for a little little kid show, Punisher showing up is wow. That actually happened, but he does, and it's it's impressive. And one episode I, I firmly remember is uh, uh, Wolverine or Wolvie, as they call him. Uh, Wolvie is uh, upset that he's being left out by the Avengers more and more often, so he decides to try and find another group, and he joins up with Alpha Flight for a while. <laughs> that works out pretty well. He also joins up with the Captains because Captain America said I've got this other team. And that's where he introduces uh, Wolverine as Captain Canada, and he has to he meets the rest of them, which were Captain uh, Britain and Captain Liechtenstein. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's a funny little show and great to watch. Stone, if you ever get a chance to um, watch it, I'm about it. 
Yeah. You're definitely going to have to show me that one, because yeah. along with the Fantastic Four, X-Men, all these other ones, like there's so many great superhero shows to watch on these streaming services. Um, one and, that we were talking about... And some anti-ones, yeah. Yeah, the one we were talking about was uh, on the DC streaming service. There's this new extremely foul-mouthed Harley Quinn cartoon. Yes. You showed me a trailer that. about that earlier. Uh, Kaylee Cuoco of The Big Bang does the voice of Harley. Yeah. Uh, Diedrich Bader is back as the voice of Batman from when he was uh, uh, the Brave and the Bold. He was the voice of Batman, yeah, okay. Brave and the Bold. So it's got uh, some of the humor, the slapstick humor we of that, Brave we get the Bold. Hamill Joker, right? Uh, I believe it's Ham- yeah. uh, Hamill again as Joker, uh, and it's it's just, but it's a different take on the Joker than that. And uh, when they first announced this, and they did the first trailer at Comic Con, it looked intriguing. Huh. An R-rated animated series with Harley. If you're going to do it with anybody, and you're not going to do the full Suicide Squad because you don't want to step on James Gunn's toes. With the Suicide Squad coming, I'm like, I can understand. All right, let's try this. Uh, and then uh, it seemed like from the trailer, it's not any Suicide Squad. It's like every villain. It's it's it, it with the trailer. If you you need to look it up. Oh, you know what? Double A will just send the link to the trailer. Double A will put a link up to it. Double A will for this trailer. So uh, the the trailer simply shows that it's a part of the storyline is going to be Harley. Getting her own gang together, which ends up including Poison Ivy, who has an Audrey 2 from Little Shop as it's a sidekick. Awesome. It's a, I, don't, a sidekick, I don't know who did the voice, but the comedian it, sounds familiar. He sounds like he's trying to be Audrey 2. Very much so. It's awesome. Uh, and it works. It I works just well. recently saw a production of Little Shop. It was great. Oh, the local one? Local yeah, one. Yeah, I saw that one. That was good. Um, uh, you, you have uh, her teaming up with uh, Dr. Psycho. Which is a character that most people don't remember. He's he's the little person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's Doctor Psycho. Uh, you have uh, who I'm pretty sure is supposed to be uh, Clayface. It looks that, like it, it looks, it like, looks a like skinny Clayface. It's never a, a version of him I've ever seen. Drawn. I've never seen. We've always seen him look kind of grotesque. This one looks m- more man shaped. Like like he's gotten control he, over. He it a looks bit more. kind of like a combination of Groot and Swamp Thing. Yeah, very much, very <laughs> much. There we go. Uh, King Shark. But looks like, a, like looks like a shark in a tuxedo. Shark in a tux. It's, it's great. He I'm looks like, like a shark. Hundred percent in a tux. So part of the storyline is going to be her versus the Joker, and then the other part of it is going to be Harley trying to get into the old school Legion of Doom. Because that's when you've made it as a bad guy. And the voice of Lex uh, Luthor, did you recognize it? No. Clancy Brown. Oh my goodness. Back as Lex, Lex Luthor. Luthor. Man, so that's awesome. I, I dig the fuck out of this series, I mean, and I'm all Anyone about... who's ever played the DC Universe Online game knows you're either in the Justice League or you're in the Legion of Legion Doom. Legion of Doom. One or the other. Yeah. That, that is good and bad, right and wrong, right there. Uh, do you feel, uh, as a comic book fan, here we go. I'm a big uh, comic book fan. Uh, you and I have had these conversations. Yes. Uh, Marvel, I feel, is the 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 one to read if you like anti-heroes. If you like characters that are, exist in the gray, I feel there's more of them in Marvel Ooh. than there is in DC. Okay. But all of the DC ones tend to end up showing up on the Suicide Squad. Mm. Any morally ambiguous, middle of the road anti hero. All right. So most what? of them. And it, okay, let me take that back. You're either on the Suicide Squad or you end up being teamed up in the Outsiders with Red Hood. Okay. The, the, those are your only spot for those. So. Whereas I feel Marvel has a bunch of independent. Uh, Anti-heroes that are all out there doing their own shit. And sometimes team up. Hmm. I may be wrong. This is my all observation. Right. You've read so deeper in, than In the entire spectrum of things, yeah. I want to disagree. Okay. Just because... You like disagreeing with me. That's an easy one. That's yeah. an easy out for that. But <laughs> I'm thinking... Anyone who's come in touch with... Sinistro Corpse, or yeah. the Yellow Lanterns. Yeah, you've got. Wait, Lanterns. hold on. You consider the Yellow Lanterns antiheroes? They have antiheroes. Sinistro has been portrayed as an antihero for a long set of comics. Sinestro has there. recently, in in the in since slightly before New Fifty Two, has been done some good things and 
but before recently you have to go all the way back when he was still a Green Lantern for him to have done good. I'm just looking at the likes of, of Domino, of Deadpool, of hell, Black Widow's a, an anti-hero throughout most of her career. Hawkeye is when he's Ronan. <laughs> you have more into I mean, Cap even turns into Nomad and becomes an anti-hero for a brief period of time. I feel like every like Marvel gives like what you said. DC Online has you are Hall of Justice, Legion of Doom. That's it. Whereas Marvel has given their characters more freedom. Daredevil ran the hand for a while. Uh, you get a Marvel gives their characters more chances to be gray. You see what I mean? Yes. That's my opinion. But in that in that regards, though, most of those times when you're seeing that gray side of that character, I would say it's m more for them to show that moral imbalance that they had only for them to overcome to show their true good. Okay. Um, but Whereas DC, way, like, like Red, Red Hood, Hood stays as an anti-hero forever. For the most part, yeah. Every time Bruce has tried to wheel him back in, he pushes back and, and waits. The Huntress is... Yeah. Is, when you put it out the way that you did, though, I, I definitely see where you're coming from in that regards. So I can't completely disagree with you as much as I want to. Okay. Because but if the spam wants right. to disagree with me, they, they could always write in... 42 to 42straights at toke.com. It is a real email. Fucking real. It's the real. number 42, the word strains, at symbol, toke, what you're doing right now, dot com. What you should be doing right what now. What you better be doing right now. Um, so, okay, yeah. I, I mean, I can definitely see where you're coming okay. from. And I can, right. I can agree to, to, to that degree. All right. You're, you pointed out I never, I a, never lot of, a lot of ways the... that I can look at it and go, okay, yeah, but they're not anti-heroes if they're always striving in that moral ground to be the better hero. To be the better. You know, and it always seems like whenever one of them is pushed to do something wrong, there's always going to be that other hero that is also morally gray who's going to say, no, this is what makes us better. Yeah. And they persevere because... I can think of an exact storyline with Red Hood and the Outlaws that did that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was kind of like, okay, are they actually anti-hero or are they just a hero that's put into that gray area briefly? Yeah. You know, because but when I'm looking at anti-heroes, though, you mentioned Red Hood, you mentioned Huntress, you mentioned um, a couple of really good examples on the DC side, but when you go to people like the Punisher, uh, when you, you can even look at the Gladiator... For, yeah. Um, for the Shi'ar Empire as being an anti-hero yeah. to a degree. To a degree, you can consider you know, the um, Guardians of the Galaxy anti-heroes because they do good, but they're also stealing shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay, that I mean that's also something that I'd like to hear from from our spam about. That's a really really good thing to talk on. Um, I don't know. It's just I we don't get those opportunities on the air to where you and I get to just geek out over some shit. So oh, that's I was like, oh yeah, Harley Quinn. Quinn. So let's I let's mean, move on to that. There should probably be another wacky news. Oh, wa wacky news. I feel. Oh no! Wait, no, that's wrong. But yeah, no, that's I'm 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 reading it. Uh, California deputies free a bear trapped in a car. Like a big gay man? No. <laughs> not like a big gay man. <laughs> Shout out to all my bears. Uh, no. Uh, California Sheriff's Office on November 21st shared a video of a bear that locked itself inside a resident's car being freed by deputies. Placer County Sheriff's, which is not too far from us, Placer County Sheriff's Office posted a video to Facebook showing uh, deputies freeing a bear that closed itself inside a car that was left unlocked in the Lake Tahoe area. This bear had gotten into an unlocked car and couldn't get back out. Thankfully, deputies were able to free him and send him on his way, but not before the bear had done considerable, considerable damage to the interior of the car, the post said. The sheriff's office said the video should serve as a reminder to lock your vehicle doors and not leave food where it could attract the attention of wildlife. 
So I know you said this is an actual bear, but the entire time I'm just you imagining just a big hairy gay man. You just, just, just picture destroyed the interior. Anybody of walking down Folsom Street, <laughs> yeah. you you pictured half mm-hmm. the members of Pride. Just you're, are you picturing the full leather outfit, leather daddy bear, or just, are you just, no, a blue just jeans, shirtless, shirtless blue jeans, jeans with the beard, full beard, oh, yeah. Big big ears pierced and, and like gray wavy hair like oh back. oh like, like pompadour yeah. gray wavy mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's what I'm picturing too just and tearing if you, that if you match up. this description please write into forty two strains at uh, <laughs> no that's, that's so, so what a, a, I mean shit yeah lock your cars people. yeah lock your cars uh, so you never don't know when food. bears are gonna come fucking don't put, tackle don't shit. put food and uh, don't leave any of your uh, your bear porn magazines lying around to attract other bears that's not that's not the right way thing to do yeah you don't you, especially in the Lake Tahoe area apparently you so, don't we don't need this so we don't need what no, no. bears coming into our cars no we don't need bears coming into our cars uh, so, uh, yeah, in, in case you couldn't tell, uh, our wacky news had the theme of animals where they don't belong. They don't belong there. They, <laughs> they don't belong there. In, and after, after this dab, I think it's gonna, uh, out of the every, by Dip Device. Dip Device? Yeah, Dip Device. They yeah. make, they make little nectar collectors and, and... Uh, this nice is a, little concentrate smoking uh, devices. This is about the size of a good size, a, a normal size vape rig. Yeah. Uh, so it's no bigger it's the than your It's the that. length of a, of, a, of a pen, like when you yeah. put a cartridge on. Yeah, typical pen. A little so bit wider. If, if it it's battery base. easily in your hands, not difficult to... And it, it's just a little magnet snap-on battery. Yeah, yeah with this multiple, is the with, weirdest with future multiple, thing I've With seen. multiple attachments for using for cartridges or refillable pods. This is some shit out of so Firefly, you can, guys. You can, have is... your, you can have your cart on one side and you flip it over and you can have your pod on the other side. So either CBD pods or if you, you smoke jewels, you can hook them up on there if you want to. It's up to wow. you. Wow. Okay, so um, it's a multi-use device. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a Swiss Army sp- smoking device. Yep. This is, um, so this is our third way we're dabbing on this episode. Yeah, and our, and our buddy... Um, Mark, ASL Mark, ASL Mark. Yeah, he's actually one of their uh, one of their influencers. Really, because yeah. ASL Mark was interpreting the show of Little Shop that, 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 that I saw. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he uh, he's a really cool dude, and he actually gave me a little special discount code to go onto the website. Nice. Put it in. I got ten uh, percent off because of him. Wonderful. And I can use that code at any time I need to get a replacement attachment. Yeah. And he'll continue to get bonuses and props from using his code every time I order from it. That is awesome. Um, so, you know, shout out to Mark. Uh, was it ASL or Access? Uh, uh, I'll, I'll look that up. Hold on. Yeah, I'll we can find that. out. Yeah, I can find that. So I'm going to take a dab from that while I'm right. looking this up. And uh, this is <laughs> wedding cake out of their... Ooh, excuse me. Huh. Surfer Dan. Pardon me. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. let me find. So this is a, a nice little heated coil. You press the button down and it starts getting a little glowy. And you want to use a little back and forth waving motion with it and lightly dip it in. And it's a sip. You know, you don't really want to pull it's too not terribly pull. hard. You yeah, just lightly sip. Like you're sipping, uh, not even a milkshake. Like you're, you're sipping a smoothie. A, a nice, a nice creamy smoothie. Not a full suck. Uh... Uh, you could find ASL Mark over on Instagram at ASL four F O R Prop two one five patients. Yep. ASL Prop two one five patients. Or it's ASL four. It's prop. one hell of a long name, but if you can get through that and talk to this man, he's amazing. He posts it's, some really cool videos of him showing off little devices. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He interprets rock shows, rap shows. Lizzo. Uh, he did theater, Lizzo up theater. at Sack Pride. Dude was on it. It was fucking hot. He, he's the man. I highly uh, recommend checking him out. So you, you took your dab out of yep. this, right? Okay. So while you're... While I... What do I have to? I is you it just, super easy? Yeah, just, you just yeah, take. I saw what you did. Press that little button. All right, you lightly dip it in here, 
And just do that light little brushing motion and so, a light sip. While I do that, talk to our spam about what you feel the last of wedding cake is. Now, we've dabbed four times in one episode. So, one pre, three uh, a piece so far uh, on this. So, last is all out the window for us. But on a normal time when you dab this and then say, just sit back and watch Chippendale Rescue Rangers... <laughs> uh, how many episodes do you think you can get through? How long do you think one dab off of this oh, do you feel can last you? Oh, man. You can really control the size of your dab so well on that thing. You can either take a little tiny dab and really microdose, or you can hold that button down for a full 10 seconds and just back and forth and just get really ripped. So, honestly, if you're just taking little tiny dabs, I would take one just probably every hour just... To keep it going, but if oh, I took fuck. a good full size dab, um, <coughs> I'm clearing a half season. You know, I'm really? Just, oh yeah. Oh fuck. But I can get really stoned on this thing, and um, I gotta say, for the efficiency of not having to wait to heat up a banger, um, to not even really have to wait for it to warm up too terribly long, it's just charge it, <coughs> slap it on there, press it, and rip it. Spam. As somebody who doesn't normally dab. So we've dabbed off a of three, like we talked about, the mini rig, which is a, just like a larger rig, just a lot smoother than I've ever dealt with dabbing on a large rig. That yeah. mini rig is really made for dabbing. It's perfect. And the accessories you've got going on there, those pearls, everything, beautiful. Uh, we dabbed out of uh, Puffco uh, Peak. the Puffco Peak. Yeah, the Lucid, Lucid Lightning. And uh, now off of the Dip, what, what is it? Every. every. Dip Every. Yeah. Dip Every. EVRI, uh, because it's your everyday dip device. I can tell you the dip every, in my opinion, was the easiest to set up, the easiest to use. He handed it to me, I pressed a button, and boom, I was dabbing right away. Uh, the peak, you had to press, let it warm up, and then you can dab. And then you know what it's like on a rig, where you've got to sit there and heat up the mm -hmm. device. This one was instantane instantaneous gra instant gratification. Instant gratification. That's, that's a great for. thing. Yeah, that's instant what gratification. So waking up the in the dip morning, every if you got hour after a shower. Yeah, I got to hit and go. It's easy. Before. That's the fucking thing to do. However, if I was doing a social where it's several of us dabbing, I don't think I'd use that. No. I don't think I'd use that and pass it on because the social aspect. I said the peak or the rig. The whole. The whole ritual of heating mm -hmm. it up, of passing it along, of well, let me get your dab ready. Here, you control how much you're putting in. All of that is more social. So if we had a circle here, like if everybody else showed up to record like they were supposed to, uh, I, I would <laughs> rather pass around the rig or the peak. So, also, But you and I back and forth, that fucking dip What is a wonderful is thing about this is um, I've also noticed with these style of nectar collectors... It is the least intimidating form of dabbing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the thing. There's no big bulky torch. There's yeah. There's no real risk of burning yourself. I told you, I have, I've had if torches I've had a, blow if up I've in had my a face. Group of four or five people around here, and let's say two of them never smoked before, and they see three or four other stoners around and that smoke all the time, and we're sitting around with these big ass torches and blowing loud fire and getting it all nice yeah. and glowy and shit. It probably looks a little intimidating, a little, little mad maxi. People, a little mad maxi. don't really understand what's yeah. happening here. So when you present the idea to them, these things are backed by Steve Good also. Okay. Um, he's somebody who's really big into CBD. Yes, yeah. The, these things are perfect for CBD delivery. Wonderful. If you need to have that, I have anxiety. Yeah. I need to take some CBD with me and this little pocket thing. And this actually comes with a pin cap. To cover the tip. Oh, really? So you really? can keep it in your pocket. Wonderful. And, and at a moment's notice, if you need to step out... Does it come with it a smell-proof container? This little clamshell was $4, came with it, and you can't smell it through there. But what about the tip that you're covering Doesn't up with? smell. Doesn't smell it through the It burns off cover? when you're hitting it, and, and like if you go home and just clean it a little bit at the end of the day, yeah. you know you get no res build up. I love it. Nothing hangs I love out it. on there. I love it. So I, I, I very much say, I might very much say the dip every is, is a... Is, a tool that needs to be in your arsenal. And um, I have sat with a group of about six people. And, and we passed have passed that, that clamshell around. Yeah. And all have taken our little dabs. Everyone is able to talk at a much lower level. People are kind of conversing. Everyone's watching every like how it's working. Because it's a newer device. 
So it honestly has become more of a conversation piece in its own. I can also see um, this working amazingly well because of the compact and everything for festivals, concerts. Yeah. So big events and stuff, it actually is kind of cool because also, if you want to be a little on the undo about what you're smoking or how much you're smoking, and you can give dabs to friends without everyone being like, there's the torch, let's go get dabs from that guy. You yeah. can take it with you and have a, a group of like five, six people hitting it real quick on the garage or out the side of the house and At come disappear back in there and you don't have to worry about it. I so, dig it. So it, it works in, the, in that scenario, but of course... I mean, I have these other devices for that same reason you mentioned. Yeah. It's fun to do them different ways. If there was one perfect way, there wouldn't be multiple. Exactly. You know, there's... A, a, a so if we're, if we're talking... Just quick question for you. How do you... Because you've dabbed out of all these devices regularly. I dab so irregularly, I can't even say the word regularly uh -huh. anymore. So, uh, I'm pretty fucked up. Uh which device do you feel packs that most punch? If you want a consistent dab that you can have at three different levels and guaranteed you're going to get a good hit from, yeah. you want a Puff Go Peak. You want the Puff the Go Puff Peak. The Puff Go Peak has light setting, medium setting, and a really hot setting. Okay. It charges... In not that long of a time. It didn't take very long and to it hit it. It doesn't take long to no. heat up. It it uses every last drop of dab in there. There's almost zero waste in it. And simple it's USB easy recharger, to, yeah, correct? Yeah, it's easy to clean. The only thing people can complain about it is it is like a Ferrari of e-dab rigs. They do run pricey and mm. the accessories are expensive too. Yeah. So if an atomizer, let's say, goes out on you... Which I've heard people say that these go out in a month. I have had the same atomizer on here from the moment I purchased it yeah. to now. Which, how long ago you, you uh, got this? About four or six months ago. Wow, yeah. And I have not had to change my atomizer, and I've dabbed on this thing constantly. Continuous, yeah. Um, so anybody who has anything foul to say about e-dab rigs, I'm sorry, you're just a glass blower that's butthurt that times are moving. Um... But I there's, don't. There's, I don't ever think that there. That oh, there's a lot of shit talk on e rigs. No, no, no. I, <laughs> I I know that there's a lot of shit talk on e rigs. Uh, I don't think that glass rigs are ever going to go away. They're not. It's it's the They're same not. reason why we've so far moved past wooden pipes. People are still making and purchasing yeah. wooden pipes. And, but people and people are finding new wood to make them out of. If you were to tell somebody who's been in the glass game for a long time, they ask you what your favorite piece is, and you say, oh, I love the Puffco. Yeah. They're like, great, his favorite fucking piece is the Puffco. And like, yeah. They're, you're a dick to them. And that's well, just it. And I think that's just shit. Because this thing is amazing. But see, here's the, here's the thing. My question wouldn't be to you then, when, what is your favorite piece? My question would be is... What's your favorite piece to smoke out of regularly? What's your what's your oh, I wasn't what's done. your favorite piece I was on going your shelf? There. I was going there. Those I would be there. my two yeah. separate questions. The next one is is if you like a traditional dab and you just want to get the thing heated yeah. going, I, I have to stand by mini rigs from now on. Mini it's, rigs are better than it, big rigs. There's less airflow. Yeah. There's less water, but smoother. the ratio so of, smoother. of dab to heat to water to air, it's all there. Get one of these MJ Arsenal mini rigs with a nice recycler in there. If you want to get your own bangers and not use the one that come with it, I recommend the Ursa. It's their heaviest piece. Other ones can be a little off balance. Heavier bangers might okay. make them fall over. But the Ursa, you can you can get almost any 10 mil, 10 millimeter wide banger and pop it on there. And like we said, double A put links to all this. Yeah. They'll just link um, to everything. And then the dip device is just, it's fantastic for exactly the reason I told you. It's discreet. It's portable, it's easy to use, and it gets you fucking baked. It does. So, my favorite piece out of all of my pieces is my MJ Arsenal Mini Rig. I wish I had more um, money to invest in a variety of bangers and cleaners to make sure I, I can maintain it much yeah. better. The, the, the pup upside with the Puffco is just a little dip of alcohol swab inside there, cleans it right out. I disassemble it once a week, clean it out. Well, it's fun. We're, we're we're almost we're I I think oh, we're, we're out of time. We're way out of time. Oh, we're way out of time. So here's here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do something a little different. All right. Okay. We'll do our normal goodbye, but we'll both hit 
and then get through our normal goodbye before we exhale. So we have enough rigs here that you could get us set up where I'm gonna do you, a puff you do the Puffco because that's you your favorite. I'll do this one. Is this all and all I have to do is press the button for the, the dip every? Yep. Oh, it's not pressing. It's not lighting up. Hit it five times. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, my, I slipped. Yay, I worked it. Look at that. I can only press it if I... So I'm waiting for, for you to get heated up. You you get yours going. So uh, uh, so real quick before we take this hit, uh, you can reach out, uh, out to us at the number 42 <laughs> strains at toke.com. 42 strains at toke.com. You can also find us on Twitter. I'll do it to myself today. You can find me <laughs> at Surfer Dan. Just kidding. He's still pooping. But you can find me at 42 Strains. You know, the same 42 Strains that you wrote to us at toke.com. You can find uh, Chuck Dante on Twitter at iHeartChuckabees or on Instagram at i at uh, Chuck underscore Dante. You're taking your hit. Let's see if I can keep going. You can find... You can find at Blazing Roots at Stack Queen 21. <laughs> squeaky underscore peach. Squeaky underscore peach or squeaky peach or whatever the fuck her name is. God damn it. So, until next time, stay high, stay calm, and, and smoke, smoke with, with you, you soon. soon. <laughs> 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 Stop. Stop. Yeah, stop.